can live with that. Yes, I might have to put relay satellites up, Taffy. It's not a bad plan. But we'll get these other two probes to lure first and then we'll, we'll do that next. I'm not sure why I'm so worried about getting that lure Perry out to absolute spot on. I want to go polar anyway, so. We'll make an adjustment. About eight years somewhere. If I can get this somewhere close to polar. Then we can come down on the top and we can get a different biome. Very up to 22k. We're not going to have comms when we get there, but burn up here instead and just bring it down. Alright, 90 meters a second. Burn in 10 minutes. Let's go. I don't have mystery goo from the surface of Lua yet, because I took it in the atmosphere to be on the safe side last time, so I'm going to save this until we get there. Maximize the science. Uh, burn in 40 seconds, 91 meters a second. No probably up to 19. That'll do. Bye road. See you later. by Michael Bay. It is a bit on the lens flary side, isn't it? I still kind of like it though. It's just it's different enough to stock. And I love the binary suns. I really do. I'm trying to remember the name of them now. I think it's Destiny and Fate are the two the two stars. And the system is known as the Tempest system. If I remember right. Apologies to Link, I've got it wrong, but I think that's what they're called. Uh, okay, we're now in space high above Lua. But I'm saving the goo for the ground. If I was to burn about here. Hmm. What would it take to get into orbit? 96. We have 300. What would it take to get us to an atmospheric landing? I ran that South Pole. 220. I can live with that.
Yeah, that works. And we put ourselves on the Renewal node right now. It doesn't matter if we have no comms because we can still burn engines on the far side. Actually, we might have comms anyway. Now that Lewis come round to this point, we should still have comms back to, back to the road. I was going to say Kerbin then for a minute. Alright, 10 second burn. Burn at the North Pole, land at the South. Totally how it works. Bizarrely, actually, is how it works. <laughs> uh, yeah, stop burn. Pay attention to the clock. Uh, periaps is three kilometers out of touch. You know what, Otter God? Just because you're here, and just because we can, um, There you go. <laughs> 902 meter periaps. How's that? I hope it works now. Because if Gopher 900 messes it up, I'm going to blame you. <laughs> uh, orbital retrograde. And hold it there. You can go away. Set five from here just in case. And a 920 meter high mountain. It wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> For those of you that didn't see the old series, 900 is is one of those things that kind of turned into legend. We were heading out to do a grand tour of all of the moons of Jewel, and I was approaching Paul, I think it was, and KSP's floating point math decided to, to glitch on us. Set up a a nice encounter with um, about a 20 kilometer. Per, uh, Apo apps flying over Pole, get space near Pole, get all the science, it's going grand. Warps into orbit, pass the SOI, and next thing we know, that 20 kilometer clearance has turned into 900 meters. And there was some panicked, panicked thrusting just to try and clear the mountains before it all went horribly wrong. It was one of those glorious KFU moments. Glenn the Karakan. I go build stations. Oh, probably Hamza, absolutely, yeah. I mean, I've got the colonization stuff installed, I've got USI live support, I've got the stations, stock alike components, all the stuff's there. There'll be stations later on, absolutely. Station building's half the fun. I love doing that. Down to 16k. Wait, let's see how much this stock. We're still in space low. This curious as to when this actually changes. Ten K. Ten K is the atmosphere on Lua. It's hardly worth existing. And our parachutes are set to I believe three and a half, yes. Plenty of time for the shoots. Those are some quite big mountains, aren't they? When you build it, dot with it some SSTOs. Yeah. And the other thing is, I've got um, the contracts pack installed in this, uh, giving aircraft a purpose. So there'll be more aircraft stuff in here as well. So, yes, I'll, I'll go for SSTO at some point. 
when I have time to sit and mess around with, with planes, and I've got the engines to do it. I might well go for SSTOs. But yeah, there, there's awesome big old mountains. Alright, let's bring this down. Well, I could deploy chutes right now. SSTO, single stage to orbit, Tati. Uh, basically, you don't drop anything, you don't drop any external tanks, you have no external boosters. You fire one engine, it goes to orbit, it comes back, and the entire ship returns. Basically a space plane. You know, you taxi off the runway, you take off, get to high altitude through um, standard jet engines, and then you either have a rocket that switches to uh, rocket mode, um, burns off liquid fuel and oxidizer, or you have extra rockets on board and you switch engines over that way. Damn, that's pretty. Yeah, big mountain's dead ahead, but that's fine. I don't know the way the bio keeps shifting back to atmospheric midlands, we got that one. It's not what I want. Oh no, oceans. Alright. Drop the engine, deploy the shoots. Over the main ridge highlands, a different biome at least. And now the shoots are out, it should stay there. That was the engine hitting something, probably that. It is just gorgeous, isn't it? I'll post the screenshots later on. I'll stick them up on Twitter or something. Okay, temperature scan while flying over the Main Ridge Highlands? Absolutely. Destroying the sanctuary is a beautiful place for launching engines at it. To be honest, we've been here before anyway. I mean, it's not like you know the Kerbals haven't already tried to terraform this place, so... Data. Our pressure data is flying at lower, isn't it? The temperature is the one that's biome dependent, so yeah. We don't get another pressure reading. Well, we're coming down on pretty rocky terrain. Uh, let's put those bays back in before we break them off. Bring this down to the surface. Five meters a second. Nice gentle descent. I mean, the atmosphere is so thin, we're not cutting a huge amount of speed off with the parachutes because number two parachutes for a ship this size would be massively overpowered. But come on. I kind of get the feeling where this is a bit like um, <laughs> a bit like fillet <laughs> landing on the asteroid. You know, we're stuck in a canyon. We can't see any sunlight. We kind of landed wonky, but we're down. Um, we still have comms back to road somehow. Not sure how, because we're stuck in. 
Tiny little canyon. But we're down. Are you going to stop rolling? Maybe. Anyway, temperature scan from Lewis Mainridge Highlands. Absolutely. Atmospheric pressure scan. Thank you very much. And mystery goo. Goo has been observed. It's still purple. Electric charge 135. Might be enough to transmit it all. No. But that's okay. Uh, if we can just get some sunlight back on this thing. It's not going to happen right now because I think the sun's just setting. But it's been around until morning. Of course, being at the pole, we're in perpetual daylight. And somewhere in there we've got some charge. Enough to transmit? Yes! Excellent! <laughs> Deploying the base didn't really help. But it might at least stabilise the roll. There we go. And yeah, that surface does look good, doesn't it, Boomer? Can you imagine trying to drive a rover over that once they actually get the collision stuff in there? Driving on this would be so much fun. Really would. You have to go so carefully. Can I reaction wheel it upright? Um, probably not. I can try. <laughs> Maybe in spin ties. K speed's wheel module gives me nightmares. Yeah, that's true. I think I might have to you do have to put like six or eight wheels on it just to make sure some busy contact with the surface all the time. Uh no, it's not gonna turn up right, Tatty. It's it's quite happily stuck. But that's alright, it's down. It's in the main ridge highlands, which is what we wanted. So then we'll leave our little probe sitting in its little rocky canyon. One more gratuitous screenshot because we can. And then back to KSC. And we need to do one more of these to get the third biome. So basically, same mission again. So we'll just launch another one, send it straight up. Refill the iron brew because I've run out of juice. While well, that's loading. Ah, the finest drink in Scotland. There we go. I'm refueled. Refuel the ship. Uh, Lure probe 2. And we'll see if we can drop this one somewhere around about the North Pole. Yeah, it's Iron Brew movement. Actually, Iron Brew Extra, because I'm trying to cut down on the sugar, but... Well, that's true, we got rid of the Collision Pro, weren't we? That's a very good point. Thank you for reminding me. Yes, we will. We will put the collision probe on this one. Uh, let's recover that. And we'll go and tweak it. It is the perfect hang of a cure, Puma. You're absolutely right. 
cures everything in the land brew. I'm pretty sure it could cure COVID given half a chance. Maybe that's why Scotland's got lower rates than the rest of the country. Maybe iron brew is a COVID prevention. I mean, it's no worse than most of the batshit conspiracy theories out there, right? Clean the bowl metal. Yeah, it's a bit like coke in that regard. The acid and the sugar just basically clean up the stuff quite happily. Come on, load in. There we go. Okay, if we're going to put a collision probe on top of this. Iron brew contains hydroxychloroquine. <laughs> so if we inject iron brew into Donald Trump, will he turn even more orange? Is that possible? I mean, I don't want to bring politics into the stream, but, you know. Now, if I take a decouple, do I have any separatrons? I do have separatrons. And if I take a small reaction wheel and put it up there as well, so I've got some control over it. And an antenna for comms. I can turn it. Central. Well, yeah, Pigman, that's another option. Absolutely. So I'm thinking we detach this. We fire this, we point it basically straight at the ground, we fire the separatrons. Hit the ground nice and hard. Because I need to. Did I not pick up the contract for impacting? Huh. Don't remember to do that. Um, save that as a 2A. Something like yours that launch him into the suns. Yeah. We have the Delta V for it. It's one of the things that always bothers me. People always go, ah, just fire him into the sun. Well, that's a good point, Otacol, actually. Maybe it was. Maybe we did complete it. Yes, we did. Impact Lua. Awesome. Okay, yeah. The engines did the job for us. Uncrewed impact lure complete. Yep. Alright, in that case we don't need the impact probe on top. Oh, I was going to have fun building that little impact probe. Come on, zoom in. Nothing new in contracts? Possibly not. Um... <laughs> See, it wasn't littering, it was science. Where are the contract configurator? I do have the contract configurator, here we go. Break the sound barrier, polar satellite, experiments on KSC, flow by ash. That is a road, temperature studies on Lua. Crude landing and a man return from Lua. We'll do that next. But no, nothing else new in there. And that wants to be an orbit of road. Not doing that. Put a relay satellite up there to do that one. 
because that'll be kind of handy. But but no, we'll just send this one up as same as the other one. Um, it'd be 30, back to 31 parts. This was 31 parts before. Oh, the nose cone. That's what I took off. The nose cone. Blink. I'm tempted to get rid of that nose cone later on. It's ugly as hell. So I'm going to do that. And then we drop the bottom stage, we drop the nose, nose cone as well. Consider it a tiny fairing. Yeah, that works. So, we need... A biome that isn't the Midlands or the High Ridge Mountains. So any of the oceans will do, or possibly poles. <laughs> Thank you, Daddy. Cutting off my nose cone and spite my face. Yes. Oh, I don't have my, don't have my puns emojis. That's a shame. Oh well. Um, SAS on, engines to full, and good to go in three, two, one. Science, do you want? Oh, mystery goo. Yeah, not doing that. Saving that for surface of lure. It is. It's a really quiet engine. I think there must be a bug in the mod. Because this one comes from Tundra. This is from Tundra Exploration, this engine. I think there's just a bug in the, the volume of the engine. Nothing I've done with the, with the game volumes. I mean, it's no big deal. At least Tatty isn't deafened. It's not the vac, is it? Did I put the vac on there? No, it's the Marlin A booster. Yeah, it's not the vacuum engine. a little fast. Come on. Level out. Apoaps is 18. And one of the nice things with the thin atmosphere on road and the lower atmosphere is actually getting to space is a lot simpler than it is on Gerbin. You can turn a lot more aggressively, go up a lot faster. And you can get practically orbital at, you know, 35 kilometers for this rate. And that's probably the most aggressive turn we've done so far. 25, 26, and we're almost horizontal. See just how fast we can get it in atmosphere. Apo's 38 and climbing slowly, which is fine. We're still going to hit an app. We're still going to hit space quite comfortably. But if I can turn more of the stage into horizontal, all the better. Let's just burn that out. Hi, nose cone. Wee. 
That's how you get rid of those guns you don't want anymore. <laughs> it probably is. It's probably not far forward all that nose going. <laughs> I'm kind of tempted now. Can we see it separately? Yeah, it's not tracking debris. Um, no, no, it didn't quite make orbit. Ah. What happened with the nose going off the god? Uh, we ejected it from the top of the ship and it's now th it went flying off it. Ridiculous speeds and it's now three kilometers away from the rover. No, no, I meant to get rid of it. Unfortunately, the decoupler is still stuck on the top. I should have used a stack separator, but... It just looked ugly, so I wanted to get a shot of it. We don't need it in space. Ah, perhaps this is already 108. Wow. Okay. Uh, time to Apo six minutes. All right. Yeah, I should have turned the decoupler upside down. It's true, Tatty. I, I wasn't thinking at the time. Ah, uh, comms are gone. All right, three minutes to Apo. About there, we should be about on prograding for these comms again now. Apo in one minute thirty. <laughs> if you want to nip out and get it, Tatty, go ahead. I mean, you know, send a rocket up, do a spacewalk, pick it up, catch up with this, reattach it. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, and you're the one with the Kerbal Attachment System experience. That also means that when I finally add you to the space program, which I will at some point, because, you know, most of my viewers get added to the... added to the program, you're going to be an engineer. One hundred nine by one hundred seven. Space well and truly achieved. Right, let's take this one to Lua. Uh, again, add a maneuver about there. Get that out about four million. There's our periaps. Close enough. And then we'll set it polar from here. <laughs> Everything we built is Lego. Fair enough. Actually, that's the point. I wonder if you could do a Lego mod for KSP. You know, remodel all the. Redo all the stock models and make them Lego bits, and have them hooked together with all the, the proper lugs and everything. That would be awesome. Massive copyright breach. And I'm sure Lego would put a cease and desist on it. But it would be kind of cool to actually have a Lego KSP. I'm honestly surprised that doesn't exist in some form, actually. Attachment node on each peg. <laughs> Can you imagine how much stuff you could put together? Can you imagine what the UI would look like? Oh. Um, 23 minutes to the node. You think someone's done it? I haven't seen it. Oh, okay. If you've got a link to it, Tatty, please post it. Part count will go through the roof, it's true, but once you get the, um... Once you get the VAB upgrade enough for infinite parts, it doesn't matter. Although your frame rate would go through the floor. Brick mod? Okay. Actually, Tati, you should be able to post links now, I think. Um, I think I set links as allowed for either regulars or VIPs. I'm not sure. I think it was VIPs. So I think most of you can post links now. 
Where's my ship gone? Has anybody seen my actual craft? Something's glitching here. I think we're actually inside it. Or we're a long way away from it. One of the two. Oh, oh there it is. Hello, tiny ship. I wonder where you've gone. Hey, Link's worker. Excellent. Thank you, Daddy. Maybe I'll do a one-off stream over, over Christmas with the Brickmark just to play with it. That sounds like fun. <laughs> Otter God watch stuff involving Lego? Surely not. Yeah, maybe we'll mess with that at some point over Christmas. Oh, we're currently hitting Lua. Always a good start. Bring it in polar again. Very apt of seven kilometers. <laughs> Funny enough, pre-print I had the Saturn V kit sitting by the side of me as well. I've been saving it for Christmas when I have time off from work and plenty of time to sit and build it. I'm waiting for the moving to a new house present incentive. That's fair enough. But yeah, I've got mine here. I was going to get the original one and then I was short of cash and couldn't justify splurging on it. And then it went off at production and suddenly a £100 kit cost 300 quid to buy. Which was, you know, a bit much. And then they re-released it. When the first date reappeared, I bought one on the spot because I wasn't missing out twice. And I love that version 2 has still got 1,969 pieces. And I believe they changed one piece between version 1 and version 2. Probably just enough to make version 1 still count as, you know, the original. They had to change something rather than just re-release it as it was, but... Yeah, just one piece. Alright, let's take this thing to Lua. 7 second burn in 12 minutes. It's a show about that, about the Lego Saturn V kit? Or me taking ships to Lua? I'm pretty sure this is the show about that. Uh, 30 seconds to burn. Up to 255 meters. <laughs> Even for me, that's a little bit low. Just above the atmosphere. And then we'll set a maneuver there to put us in orbit. Actually, I think we'll go for orbit this time and then we'll. Um, Pick our landing site from there. Rather than doing a direct descent. Eleven by thirty six. Cause I think 
No, we don't have anything else to do. There's a return from road orbit mission, but we'll deal with that later on. This one ain't coming back. But it's not meant to. Interesting that that one landed virtually at the South Pole, but didn't count as a polar island. Maybe it's just the North Pole that has those. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Otter God. Thank you for the um, the Twitch Prime. <laughs> and we got an extra remote emote unlocked as well. Awesome. Play with that later. Cheers, Otter God. Much appreciated. Yes, you did, Arthur God. I saw the I saw the, the notification come in last week. Uh, well, I heard it come in on stream, and nothing came up on on the actual stream. But I heard the the ping, and, and saw it in my my Twitch channel stuff. But. So yes, you did put it in last week. But it keeps once you've subscribed, it keeps letting you um, put the notification through on stream. Yeah, the share just told everybody else you subbed. Okay, two hours to burn. So yeah, the sub comes in when you do it, and then the notification comes up when you want it to. Because a lot of time, you know, there's no guarantee that your stream is actually streaming when you when you put the notification through, especially if it's a recurring automatic one. So it lets you do it on stream when you want. To. It's kind of cool. Drifting off the node very slightly, so while we've still got comms, I'll just tweak that and line it up. Mystery Goo is getting saved for the surface. I'm pretty sure Mystery Goo is bio-independent. Yeah, it must be. Uh, 30 seconds to burn. Get that up slowly. And put ourselves in a slightly elliptical but nice stable orbit of Lua. Now if we're going to go for the polar highlands then we want to burn retrograde about here and bring that down like that. It's got to give us half a chance right? Well, we could tweak it a little bit Assuming Lua has zero inclination to its poles, which it looks like it does. We want to be heading, heading for the Terminator. I've only got 65 meters a second of Delta V left. So I guess we're not going to be doing that. So let's instead try something like that. See what we get. And this is going to come down where it comes down. We just have to hope it's the right biome. We come down right now over the Mossy Lowlands, which is a different one. But we don't have the option of stopping and dropping now. Line ourselves up on the load. And warp. Just 
get ourselves realigned. And once again, we're going to have comms all the way down, which is kind of handy. Not this much we can do once we actually get past the point of um, burning the engines out, but. Drain the last of the fuel out. And drop that stage. Job done. Where's the altitude display? Right there. And unfortunately nothing says 900 this time, I I do apologise. Coming in from 28 and hopefully heading for... Heading for the pole. So yeah, all that's left now is... Of course I have no reaction wheels left either now, which is hardly annoying, but atmospheric should take care of that. And the chutes will certainly take care of it once we get to the point of deploying those. Let's set to three and a half k. Um, well, I could deploy chutes right now. Although we're still in space, so nothing would happen. Once I get the atmosphere, so as soon as I get a biome I like, I'm going to drop the chutes. because we need to get something that isn't Midlands or High Ridge Mountains. Shoots are safe to deploy, so... Bump that up as high as I can, and hopefully stop and drop with the shoots. Anywhere below 5,000. Just give me a biome that isn't the Midlands. Come on, we're coming in over the pole. Give me a break. I don't want the Midlands again. I've done Midlands. <laughs> nope. We're in Midlands all the way down, isn't it? Oh no, Mossy Lowlands. That will do nicely. Come on, let me click on the antenna. Transmit. <laughs> that was the sound of an engine impacting somewhere. I don't know where. But... Anyone for more pretty screenshots? And <laughs> now the body's going to rotate underneath you back to Midlands. Yeah, wouldn't surprise me, Poogman. <laughs> wouldn't surprise me. But now we should be good to come down the lowlands now. Um, is there research in satellites so no signal losses when you go deeper? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to put relay satellites up anyway. So I've got research to do, but I think I've already got a relay antenna available. So yeah, research satellites will go up next. Uh, sorry, relay satellites will go up next. And then we shouldn't lose signal. We'll put satellites around road, we'll put satellites 
out probably um, beyond Lua as well try and make sure there's always coverage shouldn't the atmosphere be roughly sticking with the surface? you would think so although it's so thin it may just you know drift around on its own at this point alright let's just hope this stays as mossy lowlands And that'll be our three probes on Lua mission done. And this one might even stay upright. Yeah, it should be a gentle landing on all the moss. That uh, moss does look quite rocky. I suppose moss grows on rocks. Yeah, same thing. Sort of. Now you can really see the two suns. <laughs> You're liking oh Tatty. Tatty, really? That's right, pressure, temperature, and mystery goo from the lower mossy low yeah, Lewis Mossy Lowlands. Call this Yarmouth Site Alpha. <laughs> Absolutely. That's just so pretty. Really is. Alright, enough of the screenshots. Uh, I think that's all the science we need. I'm going to deploy this anyway, just because it looks even nicer with the bay opened out. But yeah, our little craft has done its job. Yes, we do need cruise ships where we can plant flags, but you know. We can rename it. Alright, back to the Space Center. And that's that mission complete. And that strategy is done as well, so we can go and get a new strategy now. We can have a look at all the different options for the strategy stuff. Did I do the goo? Yes, I did the goo. Did, did the goo what I got yet? That said, I didn't transmit it all. <laughs> I took the experiment data, I didn't transmit it back. Because <sighs> I is a Muppet. So we'll nip back out to Yarmouth. <laughs> we'll send the data home. I'm not sure I can, I mean, I'm not sure I should be going back to Yarmouth, you know, with all the the higher tier stuff. Shouldn't be crossing boundaries, really. But, uh, yep. Transmit data. Transmit all. And we should have enough juice to do all these as well. Yep. Get all three off one set of batteries. Awesome. It does look like the beach at Yarmouth. <laughs> yeah, tide's gone out, but you know. Not the prettiest beach in the world, Yarmouth, is it?
Okay, so that should all be done. Our missions should be down to just the two for them to scan a road and orbit in return. So, we have options for all sorts of stuff now. Start exploring Armstrong, fly by Ash. Man return from Lua. Oh, we could try and put Kerbals on Lua. Or we can go to the admin and pick something else. So, crewed missions. We have those. We have probes for Armstrong. It's basically the same thing, land probes in three different biomes on, Ar biomes on Armstrong. So we could do that. We could go straight to Ash. Again, same thing. Turn on the to boldly go one which gives us extra money when we transmit science. Stagnate your research do. Shuts down the science. Not necessarily. Pilot focus, engineer focus, contract slot machine. Removes reputation loss on contract decline, randomly modifies contract rewards penalties will between 50% and 50% up. <laughs> that would just be nuts. I'll play with that later on. Bonus to KSC science, don't need that. I'm gonna go with the Armstrong probes, I think. I know we've done um, probe landings already, but I kind of want to do a different moon. That said, I am going to do relay satellites first, if I've got the stuff I need for it, which I think I do. But we'll take that strategy. Is it worth upgrading administration to get a second strategy in? Probably not. Right now, anyway. However, we do have 108 science to spend is going to give us bigger engines. LV-303 Pug, T-15 Valiant. There's the Marlin Vacuum. Amazon Thuds. Torch. T-155. Okay. The Twitch. More containers. We still haven't got anything up to, you know, the standard engines you have in Kerbal. We haven't got the LV-909 or the, um, or the 35. They're going to be up here somewhere, I think. There's the 909 Terrier. I mean, heavy rocket, there's the Reliant. There's the engines you normally start with, the Reliant and the Swivel. T-45 and T-30. They're in the 90 Science tier now. Advanced rocketry is tempting, although we have enough stuff at the minute to get us to Armstrong. What else can we get in this tier? Aviation gives us a bigger airstream protective shell, which is possibly handy. Um, or what do we have down here? Uh, basic science. I think that's what I we want. So that gives us science junior. Current return unit. Radar altimeter. And we can start putting batteries in universal storage and a probe core in universal storage, which is kinda nice. Yeah. And no more ugly probe lines on the top. Gizmos. I gain antenna. Might need that. I don't know if we're gonna need that at Armstrong, but we might need it a bit further out. Survivability gives us heat shields, so we're not coming back yet. Armstrong, I don't think, has an atmosphere, so we're going to have to do powered landings. Which is going to be something a bit different. 
Now I think we already have landing legs from earlier on. Maybe we don't. Oh no, we do. They're in here. We've got my, we've got the basic landing legs. So if we're going to Armstrong, we're going to have to do a proper lander. Universal storage cylindrical service module. Hmm, okay, that's kind of nice. And the standard service bay as well. There's all this high gain antenna. Uh, I think we're going to be alright with the comms out to Armstrong. Some fuel tanks? Okay, that's what we get in those. I think I'm going to take the bigger engines to be honest. The reliability is kind of nice. It doesn't give us anything particularly useful, and we're not doing anything that's going to be desperately requiring any of that stuff. We don't need the tiny service module. There is some nice solar panels in that one, it's true, Tatty. The nice solar panels do always look good. Ah, we've got the engines to launch. Got it. We'll take that one. Nice flippy out solar panels for, for Taddy. <laughs> 